If you learn nothing from me today, I hope this is the one thing you learn. This is the most important concept in sales. Of, of everything you learn in sales, this one is the most important. And if you don't understand this, you don't practice this, you cannot be sales. Take effing action, put it together, and subscribe to Tom Penn's channel on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, I like it, it's crazy. Okay, let's move on to step two. Now you can find the customers, what do you do next? Now you have to make first contact. You have the company name, you know what they do, you know where they are, you know the key person, the legal representative, you have their phone number, you don't know them, they don't know you. Complete strangers. But now you have to make first contact. You might have to that. reach them somehow. So can you give me some ideas how to make that first contact? What method can you make that first contact? Anybody online? Phone, okay. Using the phone. Any other ways? Mail. Mail, email. You see, we live in a technological world. Now it's so easy to reach someone, you send an email. Back in the 1990s, you actually have to mail someone. When I was 17, I sold software. I actually have to copy the code into a floppy disk and mail it. Okay. What other ways to contact customers? Direct. Direct is you go to an industrial park. You go company to company. You go from one company to another company to another company. You knock on doors. Or you go to an office building, you go to the top floor, you go down one floor at a time, knock on doors. It's the CEO here, okay? It works, but it's a lot of work, okay? Any other way to make first contact? Mr. Kwong. Message? Yellow. Facebook, yellow. SMS. So, all of these ways, all of these ways. Which one is the best? Phone. I mean, phone. It's the phone. Why? Why? Why Tom says the phone is the best? Why the phone? Vì khi mà mình gọi cho khách hàng thì mình có thể khảo sát được cái nhu cầu của khách hàng. Sau đó thì mình mới quyết định tới cái bước kế tiếp là mình sẽ làm gì. Nó cũng ít tốn thời gian làm việc, tốn thời gian để mình di chuyển hay là những cái công đoạn khác. Okay, I hear save time. So when you call someone. You dial numbers and then they talk to you. Much easier than going direct, going to an industrial park, and knock, on, knock on the door. All right? If you go direct, you have to motorbike to their, their office, you have to knock on their door, sometimes they're not there. With the phone, dial a few numbers and, and they're talking to you. You save a lot of time. Time is money. The second reason the phone is the best is that when they talk to you, you have 100% of their attention. When they're talking to you, they're talking to you. They're not doing anything else. They're focused on you. You have their attention. Now they have to talk to you. They have to answer your questions. If you send them email, Facebook, Yellow, SMS, there is no guarantee that they even pay attention to what you send. Miss Nguyen, when somebody <coughs> wanna sell you real estate in Yellow, what do you do? You delete it. When you get a sales message in Yellow, Facebook, SMS, you don't pay attention to it. So if you use email, Facebook, Yellow, SMS to make first contact, expect one in a thousand. 999 will ignore you even if they need what you have. When you're sales, your phone is your best friend. This is the most powerful tool for salespeople. Learn to master it. Okay, so you got the phone number from uh, Maso Tue. You know what they do, you know the key decision maker, you know the legal representative, you have the phone number, da 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 da, you call them. But What's the first thing you do? Introduce about herself. Where is she from? Okay. You introduce yourself, customer hang up. So I, I get I get a lot of salespeople call me because I'm in Hoso County. Hello? Hang up. So how do you avoid that? Like Good? Good? But the first thing you should do is Find the key decision maker. Find the key decision maker. Mr. Kwong, who is the key decision maker? 
Facebook. You, you sell outsourcing. You sell CMC internet stuff. Who buy from you? IT director. That's right. The key decision maker usually is the CEO, managing director, or heads of the top department like IT director. Decisions are made by managing director and CEO. Heads of departments have influence. So when you talk to IT director, that IT director still need to go to the CEO. Can we buy this? And the CEO says, I don't know. But the key point here is you should only talk to key decision makers and that is managing director, CEO, or heads of departments. Can receptionist, can customer service buy your product? Yes, no. 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 Yeah. I like it when you respond. It, it makes me feel like I'm doing something important. I'm not wasting my time. Okay, that's right. So when you call a company and the receptionist answer, don't sell it to them. They will never buy your product. They don't care. They don't care. Receptionists, customer service, they, care, they get paid maybe five million, maybe under 10 million down a month. Sit there, answer customers, answer phone calls. Most people get into those roles not because they have big ambitions. Most people get into those roles, they just want something stable, make a little bit of money, you know, being able to buy food, live in a shitty apartment, share with seven other roommates. They're not there to help the company grow. Of course, there are exceptions. But I would say majority of them, they're just there for the, the stable job. So when I call a receptionist and start selling the product to the receptionist, what will the receptionist do? Mr. Kwong. So receptions, customer service don't pass calls. They don't pass calls to CEO managing director, especially okay. when they know your sales. And if you've done sales, you know this. Why? Because in their mind, in their mind, the receptionist, the customer service think, if, if I pass the salesperson to my CEO, then I will look really stupid and I'll probably get fired. Everybody here agree? Give me a thumbs up if you agree. Okay, that's fine. Right? So, so usually what happens is the receptionist will say, uh, who are you? Why are you calling? Can you send me information? And uh, if you're not experienced, if you're not an experienced salesperson, then you'll get so happy, you go, whoa, they want information. And then you, you work on information, you put together the brochure, you spend the whole day working on it, and you send it and nothing happens. Never send information to receptionists and customer service. They don't care. When they say send me more information, what they really want is to get you off the phone. They don't want to pass you when they know your sales. Everybody online understand? Understand. Okay. okay. In my company, in the last six years, my customer service only passed me three calls. Only three. I never tell them that don't pass me calls. I never said I will fire you if you pass me salespeople. I never said that. But they don't do it. And the same with every company. And the three times they pass me calls, they run to me. They, they, they run to me with the phone. And then they say, Tom, this is so important. You gotta take this call. I answer, oh, salespeople, three times and I'm doing business with two of them. So those three people know how to get to me. They understand how to get through customer service reception and get to the key decision maker, which is me. So how do you get to the key decision maker? What do you say to get to the key decision maker? Mr. Kwon. They don't care. Remember, receptions, they know your sales people, they don't pass. They don't care if you have a suitable solution for the company. Okay. Anybody online? How do you get to the CEO? Okay. All right. So, uh, Mr. Kwang, you're right. You have to know the name of the person. If you call in and say, can I talk to your CEO, that's not, not gonna happen. 
So in Hoso County, you see the legal representative that usually is the boss. Usually that's managing director. So the first thing you say is, is Mr. Fook there? That's it. Nothing more. You don't need to say anything more. If you say, I would like to talk to Mr. Fook because I have a beautiful solution. Your salespeople. But if you say, is Mr. Fook there? And say it like that. Is Mr. Fook there? Not, uh, uh, can I please speak to uh, Mr. Fook? Not like that. Mr. Fook there? They feel you got power. Maybe if they don't transfer this call, they get fired. They transfer. Okay? But sometimes they say, uh, who, who are you? Why, why you call Mr. Fook? Then you say, this is about a very important joint venture with your company. Connect me right now. Again, it's how you say it. Very important joint venture, connect me now. The receptionist, the customer service, they, they, they're basically deciding, if I pass, will I get into trouble? If I don't pass, will I get into trouble? When, when you say it with authority, they get scared, they, they transfer. This is why three times my own customer service run to my room with the phone. And we're doing business with two of them. Anybody here scared to talk to the CEO? Uh, yes, a little. Why? Why, why are you scared? Uh, because uh, when I say uh, director, I send uh, my picture. It's um, serious. Well, not always. I'm CEO. Am I always serious? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> uh, am I disciplined? Uh, right? That's a misconception. The CEO are people too. They're just like you and me. Well, more like me, less like you. The important thing is they're the ones that need you. Not, not the reception, not, not the customer service. And your fear is only in your head. There, there's no reason to be scared. He wants something, you have something. That's why you're having a conversation. It's really easy to talk to CEOs. They know what they want. They're very clear in what they want. Like, do not fear talking to people in authority because they're the ones that can help you make money. The bigger deals, the more powerful, more important people you have to talk to. So if you're selling military weapons like the Russian girl I told you this morning, she's talking to heads of government. That she's talking to prime ministers and presidents. You think some public servant Working inside an office is gonna buy AK-47 from you? No. And she can do it when she was 22. It's your only, your fear is stopping you. Don't let fear get in the way. And I know most of you are fucking scared of talking to the CEO. I see it in all the new sales, but that is stopping you from making the money. No fear. What's the worst thing that can happen? They say no. So what? How many businesses are there in Vietnam again? Two, four, five. 2.5 million businesses. So one say no, big deal. They cannot come to your house and kill you. So why are you so scared? You gotta overcome that fear. Talk to me, I'm CEO. You're talking to one right now. So, step one. First thing you do in uh, first contact is reach the key decision maker. And then, let's say, now you're talking to the managing director. The, the receptionist actually passed the call. Bye. Oh my god, this is really important, here you go. And then now you're talking to the to the managing director. What do you say? Em nghĩ là đầu tiên phải giới thiệu bản thân mình trước. Kiểu như là mình là hộp cái bộ phận nào của công ty gì, sản phẩm của công ty mình là gì, uh, và làm việc với CEO về vấn đề gì, ví dụ như là mua bán hay là làm hợp đồng về vấn kiểu như vậy. Ok, well, so they know your sales people. You just call the CEO and then you say what department you work in. If you're talking to someone and you have to ask what department they're working in, they're not key decision makers, okay? If you have to ask what department they work in, not a key decision maker. Any other ideas? Mr. Kwan. Talk about the difficulties of the business. So the first thing they hear from you is difficulties of business. I don't know, somebody called me and say, is your business shit? I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> okay, let me give you two ways to make introductions. Way number one. Hello, my name is Tom. I'm calling from Media Step Software. We're in the e-commerce business. We help many businesses build their website, mobile app, CRM, POS. Uh, does your company have any demand? Okay, option two. Hello, Mr. Book. 
Mr. Fook, you're in cosmetics, right? I, I love what you guys do. You guys have a, have a store on uh, Wang, Wang Choi Street, right? I love your products. I think you have such a big variety of products. I really admire your business. I think I can help you find more customers. Which one you think work better? Two. Two. Online, give me one or two. Everybody says two. two. But when you get a sales call, you always get one. When you get a sales call from anybody, they do one. And when they do one, you hang up. And when you start selling in my company, you will also do one. I don't know why. So we all agree number two is the best. It works better. And but I know it works better. But I don't know why everybody still do one. Are you gonna do one or two? Two. 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 You promise? Props. You promise. Yes, okay. I promise. I will listen yes. to your calls and find out if you do too. All your phone calls are recorded, by the way. After you reach the key decision maker, you want to talk about their business. You want to talk about them. You don't want to talk about you. They're not interested in you. When you talk about you, they stop listening. They start thinking how to hang out. But when you talk about them, they want to listen. Hey, wh why, why are you talking about my business? Are you going to give me more business? Maybe this is an opportunity. I don't know. I don't know what this is about, but you're talking about me. I like it. Everybody understand? Okay, so you talk about them. The third thing you do is you give them an irresistible offer. I'm not saying a good offer or a great offer. I'm saying an offer they cannot say no. They cannot say no to your offer. So give me some ideas. What is an irresistible offer to the CEO managing director? Yeah. What do CEOs managing directors think about every day? What do I think about every day? Yeah. Sales, revenue, profit, more customers. Because no sales, no revenue, business dies. Every business, money is the blood of every business. Without money circulating in the business, the business dies. So CEOs, managing director, they, every day they think about how can I find more customers? How can I close more deals? How can I grow my sales, my, grow my revenue? I'm doing this training myself because salespeople impact revenue the, the most. The irresistible offer is you can help them grow sales, revenue, find customers, get customers to pay more. If you offer that, they will not say no. They cannot say no. But it doesn't mean they believe you. They don't know who you are. Some crazy guy from somewhere, they don't know. You, you tell them you can find more customers. Really? How? They will not say no, they will say how. And then that's when you do the fourth thing, which is set up the appointment. You're not selling anything? That's great, Mr. Fook. How about Friday, 3 o'clock? Let's meet here. And I will explain everything to you. Just need 30 minutes. Let's set up a Zoom call. Just 30 minutes. Uh -huh. You'll understand. And they will appreciate it. Because you're, you're helping them save time. You're not selling them something right now. You set up a time later when they have time for you. And, and you can follow up and say, let me say, I will send you an invitation by email, you know, book it in your calendar, whatever. And done! That is first contact. That's all it is. Nothing more. You're not selling anything. You're not talking about your product. You're not talking about your company. You're but just doing these four things. Finding the key decision maker, talk about them a little bit, and give them an irresistible offer, set up your appointment. Anybody can do this because you can do this without knowing anything about your product. Anyone online can start doing this tomorrow. I make the training so simple, anybody can do it, okay? This whole conversation should be less than three minutes. Less than three minutes. If it's 10 minutes, if it's 20 minutes, it's wrong. If a CEO managing director can talk to you for an hour on a first call, they're not real CEOs, they're not real managing directors. Real CEOs, real managing directors, they have no time. This first contact should be three minutes only. And you're not selling anything except setting up the appointment. Okay, listen to this carefully. If the customer set up appointment with you, that is a potential customer. If the customer did not set up an appointment with you, they are not a potential customer. Doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you think about their business. It doesn't matter how big they are. If they did not set up the appointment, they're not potential. If they agree to an appointment, then they are potential. Potential means maybe they will buy something from you. There's a chance, not sure yet. But the purpose of this first contact is to find out if they are potential or not. 
to find out whether they're potential or not. And you only invest three minutes, so it's not a lot of time. Three minutes, you find out their potential or not. Any questions so far? Give me a thumbs up if you understand everything, you don't have questions. Okay, in first contact, what's the first thing you do? I take him to me with them. Good, what's the number two thing you do? No, I think I Talk about them, not the thing they want. Talk about them. What's the number three thing you do? Man, come at the job. Okay, and what's the number four thing you do? Okay. Yes, and how long should this call be? You may put them. Okay, less than three minutes. Very good. Now, the next topic I'm going to talk about is the most important topic in sales. If you learn nothing from me today, I hope this is the one thing you learn. This is the most important concept in sales. Of, of everything you learn in sales, this one's the most important. And if you don't understand this, you don't practice this, you cannot be sales. It's called the numbers game. Life is a numbers game, not just sales. Everything we do in life has to do with numbers. Finding girlfriend, finding boyfriend, finding husband, finding wife, learning to play the piano, learning to play the violin, moving up in your career, build a great relationship with your girlfriend or, or wife. Everything we do is numbers game, including study for uh, school, going to a PhD program, getting high score in IELTS. I'm a boy. I'm looking for a girlfriend. Do I find the first girl I talk to and she's my girlfriend? No. Yeah, pr probably not. I'm not that good looking, right? Even if you're really good looking, the fact of the matter is that most people are going to reject you. So you talk to 10 girls, maybe one will go out with you. And that's the way it is. To find your wife, you, have, you probably have to date a lot of girls. Eventually, you find the one. And that could still be wrong. And then so you cheat on her and you find another girlfriend. And then you get a divorce and then you marry this other girl. And this time she cheat on you. And then you have to go find someone else. And after you do many times, maybe finally you find someone. Someone that can stay with you forever. If you're a girl, girls are easy. If you're a girl, naturally boys will come to you and say, Hey, want to have coffee? Hey, you want to hang out? And uh, girls, girls in the group. Do you say yes to every boy? Do you say yes to every boy? No, right? Any, any girl here say yes to every boy? Give me a thumbs up. No, nobody? If you say yes to every, every boy, give me your phone number. Give me phone number, I'll call you later. So that's numbers game. Boys are gonna get rejected a lot. Girls are gonna reject a lot of boys. When you learn the violin, when you learn the piano, you have to put in the time. Maybe every day you put in one hour, two hour. That's also numbers game. Do you know anyone in one day become master pianist? Anybody like that you know? No. Anybody become master sales, master marketer, master uh, cameraman, master anything in one day? No. Everything takes practice. That's numbers game. You gotta put in the numbers. Same thing with studies. You gotta put in the time. If you wanna get a, uh, I don't know, 700 in IELTS, you gotta put in the study time. You gotta go to a lot of classes. If, if uh, you don't go through the classes, you're not gonna get a high score. That's numbers game. Everybody understand what I say online? Yeah. Okay. Now, sales is a numbers game too. And Truk is gonna show you some data. This is really important. I, I want you to listen carefully to this. So here we have an article. So this article talks about the average conversion rate by industry, meaning how many customers you close. What's the percentage? This chart on the left side, there's 0%, 2.5%, 5%, 7.5%, 5%, 5 and 10%. And on the bottom, you have different industries. For example, e-commerce, you have financial, healthcare, and uh, real estate. Notice that, notice that most industries have a close rate between two and maybe two and four percent. Even the best one here, professional services, it's about 9%. So yep. professional services is like accountants, lawyers. So what this means is that most businesses, they talk to 100 customers, they only close two to four. Two to four, doesn't matter what industry. That's normal. There is no industry where you close 50% or 100%. There is no industry where half of the people buy from you or everyone buy from you. 
Because if an industry like that exists, I will be there first. I'll be there first, I, I won't wait for you. Any industry, your close rate is, let's say about 2%. If the close rate is, uh, is 2%, that means 100 customers, you call, how many will buy from you? Two. Two! It, <laughs> we have people that can do math, excellent. Uh, right, that's right, two. That means how many will reject you? 98. 98. That's great. 100 phone calls. 98 will say no. 98 will say I have no demand. 98 will say I'm busy right now. 98 will just hang up. Only two will eventually buy from you. Not today, maybe later. If you're a great salesperson, your close rate will be higher, maybe five. If you're an average salesperson, you get two. But if you don't know what you're doing, and you do everything wrong, you don't do what I teach you, you get zero. So let's say you're average, and you want to close 10 customers this month. How many first contact you have to make? Nam jam khách hàng. Nam jam! So everybody understand that, right? That's the numbers game. And this is the hardest part for new sales. Because half of you will quit after three calls. Tomorrow when you start calling people, calling businesses, after three calls, you'll think to yourself, why am I doing this? Hey. What, what's the point of this? This sucks. And then you quit. That's because you did not understand what I said just right now. No. Numbers game. It takes a 100 to get two. You're gonna go through the 98 rejections to get the two, yes. And that's perfectly normal in sales. In real estate, in real estate, you talk to 100 client, only two will buy. If you sell Kia Morning in a Kia dealership, you stand there waiting for customer to come. 100 people come through the door, only two will buy. 98 people will come in the dealership, kick the tire, and then go. That's the way it is. Everybody understand the numbers game online? Yeah, hey, what? Okay, can you handle 98 rejections? Yes, yeah, Yes, you can. Easily said and done because I know half of you will quit after only three calls because we, we look at all the data Every time you make a phone call we know and we know when you quit So most half of you will quit after three calls, but the question is why? Why like half of you will quit after three calls? Can someone explain this to me? <laughs> what about their psychology? When, when people get rejection, they don't feel good, so they quit. People online agree. Some people agree. That's good. That's good. But, can I ask you, when customers say no to you, no demand, busy, fuck you, whatever they say, do you die? Does anybody die? No. Yeah. So you don't die, right? The customer die? No. Does anybody die? No, right? So why do you feel bad? Nobody died. Nobody died. So why you feel bad? Did Vietnam sink to the bottom of the ocean because customers say no? No. Did the planet Earth explode? No. 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 Did your dick fall off? No. No. Why you feel bad? Why? I don't understand. Sensitivity is poverty. If you're sensitive, if you're a sensitive person, whatever people say to you, you're gonna feel like shit for hours, then Forget it, you're not gonna be able to do anything in your life. Just stay at home and eat instant noodles. Forget it, your, your life is wasted. If you're sensitive, you're poor. If you don't wanna be poor, you cannot be sensitive. And when customers say no to you, that's okay. First of all, nobody dies. And second, what they're saying is, I have no demand, I don't need what you sell to me. And that's a perfectly normal answer. Let's say, Miss Nguyen, I'm looking at you. Let's say you sell shampoo. Okay, shampoo. And then you call me and say, Hello, Mr. Tom. I have the best shampoo in the world. And I say to you, I have no demand. Are you gonna feel bad and cry for 30 minutes? Are you? No. Yeah. I have no demand. You cannot sell shampoo to me. I will never buy from you. And I, when I tell you no, I have no demand, you should thank me because I don't want to waste your time. So when your customers say no to you, you say thank you because they don't want to waste your time, and but time is money. When customers reject you, when they say no, what do you do? What should you do? Yeah, Next call! Next call! 
You don't need to cry. You don't need to go watch YouTube. Need to watch TikTok. You don't need to feel sorry for yourself. You don't need to stare at your screen for 30 minutes. You don't need to question the meaning of life. You don't need to ask yourself, why am I here? Just make the fucking next call. Everybody got that. Everybody understand that, right? That's not a lot of people. All of you don't get it. Who's gonna cry when customers say no? Some people. Sensitivity is poverty. Sensitivity is poverty. Remember that. About two years ago, I have salespeople that make three calls a day. I asked them why, why you only make three calls a day? And then the salesperson says, Tom, you know, I have to do research. I need to go look at their company website. I need to Google about them. I need to research everything about their business before I call them. That's why I can only make three calls because it takes two hours to research a company. If they make three calls, how many they close? Online. Exactly. Exactly. If they make three calls, they close zero. So they spend all that time looking at the website, doing research, and then they call, and then the customer says, I have no demand, I'm bald. So you just wasted two hours doing research. So, so the best research that you can do is what? Anybody? Exactly. The best research is call the customer. They will tell you whether they're potential or not in three minutes. You don't need to research for two hours. They will tell you whether they're potential or not. If you look at their website, their website will never tell you whether they're potential or not. Their website will not say, I will buy from you. No. So when you're in step two, when you're making first contact, do not research. You're calling them one call after another. Every call is only three minutes. And most calls will be less than that. Most calls will be like 10 seconds. They reject you in the first 10 seconds. That's okay. That means not potential. Next call, 2.5 million businesses in Vietnam, you never run out. Write this down. Analysis is paralysis, just call. And for the offline people, if you need to be reminded, there's a slogan out there, it says stop analysis paralysis, just fucking do it. Stop the research, just do it. Just fucking do it. And you know why people want to do research so much? You know why two years ago I have salespeople that want to do so much research? You know why? Can you guess? No, that's not the real reason. Anybody else can guess? Because they're scared to call. They're scared to get the no. When you do research, you don't hear the no. They cannot say no to you when you do research. They're so scared to get no, they don't call. They delay the call for as long as possible. They don't take fucking action. Research is their excuse. All they have to do is just make the call. When you talk to customers, how you communicate is very important. We already said, when you are looking for the key decision maker, you have to be firm. Connect me with Mr. Fook now. Move it, Mr. Fook there. You have to speak with confidence and authority. If you're not confident, they don't feel you're a person in power, they will not connect. Communication is not just about the words that we use. There's a guy called Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is considered one of uh, the world's best communication uh, coach. He's also a billionaire. In fact, he, he organized many, uh, many seminars and it'll cost you about $5,000 to go do one of his events. Obviously, he's very good at what he does. What he says is that in communication, only 7%, 7% is the words that you use. The words that you use, only 7%. 38% of the communication is your tonality, how you speak, your voice, soft, loud. Sometimes you emphasize certain words. High pitch, low pitch, you use tonality. 55% of your communication is physiology. That's your body language, who you're looking at, what do you do with your hands. So notice, the words that you use is only 7%. 93% is something else. And this 93% will decide whether people follow you or not follow you. Customers buy or not. It's not even what you say. Let me give you an example. If I come to this training in a t-shirt, and then I say to everybody, uh, Hi, um, my, my name is Tom. Uh, today I think we uh, have to do sales training. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not very good at it, but let's go. Are you going to take me seriously? No. No. Online, are you going to take me seriously? No. No, that's right. So how you say it 
is actually more important than what you say. So let me give you an, an extreme example of tonality and body language. You know who this is? Anybody here know who this is? Lei. Okay, is he a good guy or a bad guy? I think that person. He's a very bad guy. He's evil. He killed a lot of people, six million Jewish people, for no good reason. But how can he convince an entire country to do such evil things? Everything he says out of his mouth, all the words that he uses is wrong. I mean, any, any reasonable person would see it's wrong. So how can he convince an entire country to go kill millions of people? Play the video. Do my Arbeit für Richtigkeit. Ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe, dass ich anständig meine Zeit verwendet habe im Dienste meines Volkes. Gib du jetzt deine Stimme ab. Wenn ja, dann tritt für mich ein, so wie ich für dich eingetreten bin. What do you think about his speech? He's confident, passionate, and that's how he got the entire German people to follow him. Even when his ideas are bad. I'm not telling you to be Hitlers, okay? Don't become Hitler. Don't do bad things. But what I'm saying is that if you master tonality and body language, you can convince people for good or for bad, you choose. Of course, I want you to do good, not bad. The power of persuasion, the power, if you can convince people, then you can help them. How do you master tonality and body language? Anybody? Anybody has ideas? How can you become a better communicator? Going too slow. I have a better idea. Call more customers. The first time you call customers, you, you will speak like shit. It'll be like, uh, 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 uh. After 100 calls, you'll be good. After 1,000 calls, you'll be professional. Again, it's numbers game. When I was in my early 20s, I cannot, I'm scared to give speech. I was very, very shy. How did I overcome that problem? Just by doing it. If you're scared of speaking publicly, just do more of it. If you're scared to talk to CEO, just talk to more of them. If you are scared of height, Go out there and look out every day. If you're scared of cockroach, play with them. <laughs> Not good advice, but anyways. But hey. the point is you do what you're scared of. And that's how you overcome your fear. And that's how you become a professional. For the new salespeople, it's going to be very challenging on your first day. You call customer, you don't know what to say. So let me help you. Get a piece of paper. Spend no more than one hour. Write down what you're going to say. It should only be one page. Remember the call is only three minutes. So if you write 20 pages, it's wrong. Three minute call, one page. Write it down and now you can practice to yourself. You can even find someone else to practice with. And when you call customers, you can use it as reference. It'll help you. When do you change the script? Anybody? <laughs> Oh yeah, we have somebody that went to the training before. That's correct. If after 100 calls, you got, let's say two potential, two people want to set up meeting with you, then maybe your script is okay, right? But if you got 10, oh, that's really good. Good job, okay? But if you got zero, then you probably need to change your script. You need to look at your script and figure out what to change. But you don't change your script until at least 100 calls. Do not change your script after three calls because remember, it takes 100 to get two. If you only call three calls, you don't know for sure. And if you get zero after 100 calls, there can only be two things wrong. Maybe you need one, maybe you need to change your script. Or two, maybe you're not saying it right. Maybe not the right tonality. Maybe both. But you only make those changes after 100 calls. Questions? Dạ, cho em hỏi là ví dụ nếu mà khách hàng hỏi mình là ai thì mình trả lời sao chị? Well, tell them the truth. But you, you don't start with who are you, right? Because they don't care who you are. But if they start caring about who you are, that's a good sign. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I would like to tell you a story. So, about two years ago. So, I wanted to contact uh, the Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam e-commerce association. I want to partner with them. 
because I think they know a lot of people and if we work with them, we can teach a lot of businesses about e-commerce. If we work together, we can reach even more people. So I asked one of my sales girls and I said, can you help me set up a meeting with the director of Vcom? It's first contact situation. And she said, okay. And one week later, she came back to me and she said to me, Tom, cannot set up the meeting. The director of Vcom very busy, have no time. He's traveling, cannot set up. So I look her in the eye. And I said, no, he's not busy. He's too busy for us. He thinks we're not important. That's why he says he's busy. I don't care how you do it. Just get me the meeting. So the girl scratched her head, went back to her desk, got a message from her. It says, meeting with become director, Mr. Jung said, Friday, 3 p.m. at the Sticks restaurant. I was so surprised. I, I, I walked down, I went, when I went to her desk. I walked up to her, I'm like, how did you do it? How did you do it? But uh, she's so shocked. And then she said, well, I, I, told, I told them that you want to buy their association. It worked. It was an irresistible offer. When you give them an irresistible offer, they will not say no. That meeting was set up so fast. The only problem is it's a lie. It's not true. So I'm, I, I, I'm saying don't lie to people. We, we are an ethical business. We don't lie to people. The meeting was set. Okay. Great, but I don't know what to say to them now. So on Friday, uh, I went to meet Mr. Jung at Sticks restaurant and uh, we ordered three bottles of wine and then we mo hai yo. After three bottles, it's like, oh, I love you so much. You're the best. I love you. And since then, we've been very good partners. We participate in many of their events. And you will see, you'll see that we are, we are involved in everything that they do. If we did not offer the, give them the irresistible offer, the meeting would have never happened. Do they want to sell their association? Probably not. But Mr. Jung probably thinks, who is this crazy guy? I got to meet this guy. So you got to get the meeting. Without the meeting, nothing happens. So that's an example of first contact situation.